Flames destroy a home and firefighters make a gruesome discovery inside. Now we're learning more about that victim. And dental care can sometimes be a financial obstacle for children. How a local dental school is helping a group of West Side students keep their teeth and mouth healthy. And it was a cold start. How does the rest of your Valentine's Day look? We've got the latest forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. New this noon, the woman killed in a house fire has been identified. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office says she is 46-year-old Sasha Dawn Byler. Investigators say she died after inhaling too much smoke. On Wednesday morning, fire crews were called to a home on Briar Meadow. The San Antonio Fire Department says heavy flames and a gas leak made it hard for the firefighters to make their way in. But once they got inside, they found Byler. It's not clear how that fire started. Right now, the search for a missing woman continues in San Antonio. 70-year-old Virginia Ann Piscina, last seen around 3.30 yesterday afternoon in the 600 block of El Monte. She has very short black and gray hair. Police say she also has a cognitive impairment, which makes her a danger to herself. Piscina was wearing a beige hat and jacket when she disappeared, along with blue jeans and a dark gray shirt. Police also want you to keep an eye out for her gray Mitsubishi Mirage with a license plate of JCW2525. If you see her or her car, you're asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. And helping families in need, that's the goal of a new initiative in Bexar County where millions will be used to fund mental health programs. $7.1 million will fund several projects in the community. Some of those funds will go to Haven for Hope. The county commissioner for Precinct 2 says the process of finding the money started months ago. He says for him, boosting funding for mental health services is personal. All policy making is personal. I have a you know story. Many people have stories about how mental health or mental illness impacts families. Um, and so I, I thought it was important to prioritize and figure out a way we can put additional resources in to help families here in need. Um, about $3 million will be set aside to help fund emergency mental health care for people in our community. Well, keeping up with your dental health may be difficult for children, especially if they face financial obstacles. It's one of the many reasons why UT Health San Antonio School of Dentistry has partnered with Edgewood ISD to offer free dental checkups for a group of students. We got to follow some of those students today that were getting their teeth cleaned. 250 Edgewood ISD second graders arriving at UT Health San Antonio School of Dentistry for free dental checkups. This is all part of National Children's Dental Health Month, and those checkups are going to be done by dental students and residents. Especially in San Antonio, we eat lots of acidity, we have lots of sugar, we have like, you know, we drink lots of soda, and it's, it's fun. But unfortunately, it really affects kids' teeth, especially if they're not brushing. Why do you think? It's important to take care of your teeth. To make them get clean and no cavity. It's really important for us to educate them and at least teach them kind of why it's important to brush. A lot of these kids come in and they don't even know that they need to brush two times a day or maybe they don't brush at all, you know? And so it's just really, really important for us to kind of try to ingrain the idea that toothbrushing could be fun and dentistry is fun. And maybe we'll even get some future dentists, you know, just by giving, this, giving them this really nice experience. We have a little dentist here already. <laughs> Six Flags offering a free ticket to the theme park if you donate blood today. The park is teaming up with South Texas Blood and Tissue Center to host a blood drive. It's happening right now and ends at 2.30 this afternoon in the Fiesta Texas guest parking lot. Donors will each receive a free spring park admission ticket. That's good any day through June 30th. The coronavirus shows no signs of slowing down. Over 64,000 confirmed cases worldwide, most of them in China. But there are 15 cases in the U.S., including one right here in San Antonio. And right now, millions of people are quarantined around the world, some of them on cruise ships. ABC's Sherry Preston has more. Ambulances and buses taking 11 passengers off the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked in Yokohama, Japan. A first step in releasing over 3,600 passengers who've been quarantined for nine days, confined to their cabins most of the time with only limited interaction with the crew. We're also required to wear masks when we open our door to, to take our food from them. On board, over 200 passengers contracted the COVID-19 coronavirus. One of them, John Herring, received his test results today and is now isolated in a hospital room. I'm alone here in the room and 
Uh, I would rather be back on the cruise ship. His wife, Melanie, remains on the ship. This is basically just a waiting game right now. The wait is over for 2,200 passengers and crew members on another cruise ship who were denied port of entry in Thailand, Japan, Taiwan, the Philippines and Guam, even though there are no suspected COVID-19 cases on board. Cambodia's prime minister welcoming the passengers. Cambodia let us go. Even the United States, Guam did not let us land, but Cambodia did. So that's wonderful. Back in the U.S., an additional confirmed case, an unidentified patient among 91 Americans who were evacuated from the Chinese city of Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak. All of them placed under federal quarantine when they arrived at a Texas military base. There may be additional cases that we identify. I do want to prepare you for that. The virus has claimed the lives of more than 1,400 people, most of them in China. Chinese officials now revealing more than 1,700 health care workers have been infected. At least six of them have died. Sherry Preston, ABC News, New York. And of course, yesterday, the CDC confirmed that a patient in isolation at a local hospital and is being treated for the coronavirus. You can read the latest on KSAT.com, plus how San Antonio scientists are joining the world war worldwide fight to find a cure for the coronavirus. To the come this half hour, some San Antonio Rampage hockey players stunned when it was announced the team was sold and leaving town. We've got some reaction coming up in sports. Military families are feeling grateful after being gifted vehicles. How the major gift came together, that's right after the break. Welcome back. Three military families now have reliable vehicles. They received the life-changing gifts this morning. Gun collision along with USAA and Allstate came together to make it happen. Local vendors helped fix up three cars, doing the body work and painting them to get them ready for the families. I've got two kids at home and uh, just being able to get around uh, and not begging and borrowing rides, you know, is... is is independence, you know, and it means a lot, you know, and right now I just wasn't able to buy another vehicle. The vehicles were gifted to these military heroes in conjunction with the National Auto Body Council Recycled Rides Program. As part of that program, businesses team up to repair and donate vehicles to individual families in need. Love is in the air. We need some Nat King Cole or some Barry White or something behind this one, don't we? <laughs> Couples kick this Valentine's Day off by getting married. On the courthouse steps, the lovebirds gather downtown to tie the knot for free. The first batch of weddings was last night or midnight, right there at the strike of midnight. There were 102 couples at that ceremony, the previous record, 72. Our anniversary is on Christmas, and this would just be another holiday we can just, you know, do another, I guess, memory together. Engaged for two, together for seven. And it's very special because we're high school sweethearts, so just to add another special moment together it, will make, it makes me really happy may not have been Barry White or Nat King Cole but there was some music there was also a photographer lots and lots of happy couples there were four ceremonies planned the last one will be at two this afternoon couples do have to have a marriage license in order to participate and ready to read right now on KSAT.com, words from the wise advice from San Antonio seniors on making love last. To read what these folks say is their secret to a happy marriage. You can find this story on the homepage. Aww, I love those words of advice. Well, if you don't have your Valentine's Day plans set in stone, don't worry. There's plenty of events going on around town, including some big concerts. Yeah, there's also some family-friendly fun. Here's Alicia Barrera with your weekend picks. A romantic date night, dancing feet, and a family adventure. We have a variety of events for this edition of Valentine's Weekend Picks. I'm Alicia Barrera. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou? Well, apparently he's over at the Tobin Center starting February 14th. Ballet San Antonio presents one of the most iconic but tragic love stories of all time. The show runs until this Sunday and tickets start at $24. Put on your dancing boots and two-step on over to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo 
to see some music stars. It's ZZ Top and Keith Urban this weekend at the AT&T Center. This Friday, the Texas trio ZZ Top will bring down the house with their classic rock and blues hits at 7 p.m. Ticket starts at $36. And Grammy Award winning country star Keith Urban will have two concerts on Saturday. Show times are 1 and 7 p.m. and those tickets start at $73. Want to encourage your family to be more active and play outside? Well, the Woody Museum is the place to be this weekend. Science and technology become one in their new interactive exhibit, Backyard Adventures. The educational displays will showcase brand new ways to discover the outdoors, experience a flying bee's eye view, backyard sports, and many more fun activities. The adventure begins on February 15th and runs until May 3rd. For more on these events and everything happening around town for Valentine's weekend, you can head over to KSAT.com. For the new, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Alicia is extending it throughout the entire weekend, not just like a Friday, but you can enjoy the Valentine's Day. You, you got to make it difficult. You got to <laughs> yeah. you got to make your partner work. The good news is it's a very nice weekend. It is. It, it's beautiful today. You just saw the live shot there. We, uh, we're seeing clear skies again. Temperatures a little bit on the chilly side. We're still in the 40s even at this hour, but we will get into the 50s close to 60 this afternoon. Aquifer still benefiting from that recent rainfall up a tenth of a foot to 673.3 in your pollen count. There's a lot of allergens there, but not a lot of problems. Molds in the low category, 130, everything else pretty well. Mountain cedar, ash, and elm. We're going to talk about the Valentine's Day forecast. It'll get chilly this evening and some rain in our future, too. That forecast is coming up. This case at Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all-new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. The word rodeo is Spanish for roundup, and there's a good reason for that. The sport we know today would not exist without the horses and cattle brought by the Spanish conquistadors. It all began in 1519 when the first 16 horses were brought to Mexico by the Spanish conquistador, Hernando Cortez. But he forgot something. His men desired the riches of the new world, but they soon missed their beef. After conquering the Aztecs in 1521, beef became a top priority for the Spanish. And that same year, an importer named Gregorio de Villalobos brought the first cattle to Mexico. In the years that followed, Cortez became governor of New Spain, and with that, more Spanish began arriving with more cattle and more horses. Eventually, Cortez established a major stock breeding program not far from what is now Mexico City. Over time, the Western style of ranching brought by the Spanish began to evolve. The mixing of cultures and Mexico's unique landscape led to a new way of life and a new type of horseman. We'll talk about the vaqueros of Mexico in the next Rodeo Remembers. So if the wind was blowing, we'd have a wind chill. That's true. Pointed to that thing right there. Right? That's true. It was, there is but it was there. the last two mornings have been <laughs> yep. particularly just Chilly. cold. Like where my bones yeah. need to be like defrosted for several hours. It was downright cold. You're, you're right about that. It was downright cold this morning. We got down close to freezing here in San Antonio. Then you factor in the wind and it was, it was chilly. My photographer and I, in the, I had it like all the way high mm -hmm. and he had to like roll. He's like, it's a sauna, Sarah. This is ridiculous. It's, it's a yeah. sauna. Yeah. Well, listen, we'll get to June and July soon enough. <laughs> and I'll so be complaining you, then. Be, yeah. <laughs> You'll be happier then, perhaps. But uh, 34 degrees this morning. 30 in Hondo, 29 in Kerrville, 29 in Fredericksburg. So there were some spots below freezing this morning. We had clear skies. It was, it was the perfect setup to get these numbers to, to really fall off, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Valentine's Day climatology. We look back at some of the Valentine's Days in the past. Warmest we've ever seen, 92. That was back in 2014. The coldest, we got down to 20 in 1905. The wettest, just three years ago, 1.39 inches of rain. And yes, it has snowed on Valentine's Day before, but that was way back in 1895. That was a big snowstorm. We got about four inches here. Houston got 20 inches out of that snowstorm. Uh, so it can be kind of wild on Valentine's Day. Not the case today. It's going to be really good. If you have plans tonight, maybe a little chilly, but all in all, pretty good forecast. Blue skies right now, 49 degrees. Two point is at 35. There is an east northeasterly wind at 8. And so, yes, David, there is a wind chill. Feels like 45 out there at this hour. Uh, 51 in Bandera, 51 in Kerrville, 49 in Comfort, 50 in New Braunfels. So most everybody right around that 50 degree mark. And we should get into the upper 50s a little bit later this afternoon since we are seeing full sun. 46 in Fredericksburg, 52 down there in Carrizo Springs with clear skies there. And as we look at the big picture, some clouds across West Texas today are not uh, giving us any rain, though. And we've got the clear skies here as we zoom out some. 
Boy, this is a pretty quiet weather map for Valentine's Day. Typically in February, you see some of these big winter snowstorms. We're not seeing that. A little bit of snow up across the uh, Rocky Mountains, and that last storm system has moved off the coast now. So uh, there is some cold air, just not mixing with any precipitation. And in fact, the air is really cold as you get up here into the Midwest. 10 is Chicago, 18 St. Louis. And we'll zoom in a little bit closer here. We'll look at these numbers. 6 Madison, 8 in Davenport, Iowa. It was in well into the negative numbers in International Falls this morning. And then when you factor in the wind, these are the wind chills right now. Yes, our wind chills in the 40s. Wind chills in Green Bay, negative 12. So it is a big chunk of cold air that's moving across the middle part of the country. We're feeling a little bit of that here. Let's go forward in time, though, because we're going to get a warm up. We're going to start seeing moisture increasing starting tomorrow. And that brings the temperatures up some. By noontime tomorrow, this model shows Quite a bit of cloud cover. We'll have to see if we get some morning clouds tomorrow and how long they stick around. But tomorrow has the potential to be quite a bit more cloudy than today. That'll be the case Sunday too. So we'll see some sun, but more clouds and sun probably uh, both days. And then as we get into Tuesday, this is when we get our next big cold front. Monday, by the way, will be very warm. But Tuesday, this cold front sweeps through. We get gusty winds. We get some chances for rain. And Wednesday and Thursday are going to be downright chilly, wet in more winter like uh, we get the rain around Wednesday and even into Thursday. It'll be cold enough probably for some wintry weather, not here, but well off to our north and west, maybe around Midland, San Angelo. So this is another shot of some colder air uh, next week. But today really nice 59 easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Taking the uh, significant other out for dinner tonight. Yeah, good are, forecast. Are you? Is that what you were saying? I mean, I actually we don't have plans to go, <laughs> but if you are. Take the jacket with you, 51 degrees at 8 o'clock, clear skies, but that temperature will fall off quickly tonight. Uh, 65 tomorrow, 75 Sunday, 78 Monday. There's your chance for rain Tuesday, breezy on Wednesday. Ohio of only 49, drizzle, white rain. Thursday will be kind of cold and drizzly too. So what we had last week, or earlier this week, the cold, wet, we might have again next week. Yep, but we're going to get a repeat. All right. Good hand-holding weather tonight. It's romantic. He's a, a romantic <laughs> <laughs> reaction from players on the surprise sale of the Rampage coming up and more reaction from the Astros about that cheating scandal. It's been a week now since the Spurs Sports Entertainment dropped a bombshell that they have sold the Rampage to the Golden Knights in Las Vegas. This will be their last season here in San Antonio after 18 years in the Alamo City. It caught most of us off guard, including the Rampage players and coaches. They say they were blindsided, just like the rest of us, when that decision to sell the sports franchise came down. That decision also leaving some out of a job completely. But wait till you hear when they were told. Andrew Seely caught up with the team at practice yesterday as they break for the rodeo road trip. Right now, the biggest question on Rampage fans' minds is why. Unfortunately, the team wasn't able to shed any light on the decision to sell the team. In fact, they were just as blindsided by the news as everyone else. We didn't find out until probably um, 10, 15 minutes before the announcement. So obviously, you know, as uh, uh, for the coaching staff and, and, and for the players, we're extremely, extremely disappointed. Obviously, feel a lot of empathy for, for the fans here that have supported us. Yeah, I think some of us were a little shocked. Um, you know, I think guys have grown to love this city and, and like playing at the AT&T Center in front of these fans and, you know, feels like a major league building. Um, so I think guys are a little, uh, a little shocked, a little disappointed, but uh, I think guys just kind of feel for the fans and the, and the community and uh, guys are definitely going to miss uh, San Antonio. For, for us, all we can control is, is playing hockey to, to the you know, best that we can right now uh, moving forward and winning hockey games. The Rampage still have six more games left on this rodeo road trip. They'll return to the AT&T Center to see the fans for the first time since the news broke on Friday, February 28th against the Griffins. With the Rampage, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. And here's more of the Rampage schedule for you. They are taking on the Texas Stars tonight at 7 o'clock in the HEB Center in Cedar Park. And then teams will play again tomorrow night, again at 7 o'clock. Hey, baseball back in Arizona and Florida. The Astros began reporting this week for spring training around a dark cloud that's going to hang around a while as well. It'll be the first time we've got to hear from most of the players since an, L an MLB investigation found that the players stole signs of opposing teams during the regular season and postseason back in 2017 when they won the World Series. We don't want to be remembered as, as a team that cheated to get a championship, so obviously um, we feel terrible about that. It's not, it's, not, it's not what we want. 
So that's why we want to focus on this year and be able to to gain uh, the confidence from our fans again. It doesn't take away from the fact that that what we did in 17 was wrong and uh, <laughs> and we show remorse. It was wrong, you know, the, we feel bad, uh, we feel remorse, like I said, the impact in our fans, the impact in the game, uh, you know, we, we feel bad. But when team owner Jim Crane took the mic at the sign-stealing mea culpa press conference in Florida, he wound up kind of contradicting himself when he said that the sign-stealing didn't impact the game the same season they won the World Series. Less than a minute later, he walked that back. Listen, the, the Yankees have had a few comments out there. Um, you know, our opinion is, uh, you know, that this didn't impact the game. Um, we had a good team. Um, we won the World Series, and we'll leave it at that. I, I didn't say it didn't impact the game. Basically, you know, as the commissioner said in his report, he's not going to go backwards. Um, it's hard to, to determine how it impacted the game, if it impacted the game, and that's where we're going to leave it. We're put, apologizing because we broke the rules. But isn't sign stealing a distinct advantage for the hitter, so it doesn't it automatically impact competition? It, it, it could possibly do that. It could possibly not. You, yes, yesterday you Ready? said, I want more. I yeah. want more, not just people to go up to a podium and read a statement. Yeah. Do you feel good about this, make you feel a little better? Still not as good as I could feel about it, but I can tell you they're going to catch it all season long. It doesn't matter where they go, they're going to get those questions about oh. it all year. But will it affect their playing? That's it might after a while. It'll get old after a while. They get tired of answering those questions, but they brought it on themselves, so there you go. All right. Well, the FDA says they want a weight loss drug off the market. Why they say taking it could be bad for your health. Two years after the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School communities across South Florida coming together to honor the victims. 17 people were killed when a gunman opened fire on Valentine's Day back in 2018. Broward County Public Schools will dismiss students early today instead of classes. Many will participate in a day of service honoring the lives of the victims. And the city of Parkland has organized a service project at a park. A commemoration ceremony conducted by spiritual leaders will be held later tonight. A moment was held this morning. During an interview with ABC News, Attorney General William Barr criticized President Trump for tweeting about active Justice Department cases and criticizing judges. The White House responding that the president is not bothered by Barr's comments. ABC's Ines Stilokotera has more from Washington. Attorney General William Barr's exclusive interview with ABC News making headlines, marking a rare cabinet member rebuke of President Trump's tweeting habits. To have public statements and tweets made about the department uh, make it impossible uh, for me to do my job. The interview came as the attorney general was facing growing criticism for overruling the career Justice Department prosecutors who tried the case and recommended a prison sentence for the president's friend Roger Stone of seven to nine years. Stone was found guilty on all counts by a jury for witness tampering, lying to Congress and obstructing a congressional investigation into Russian election interference in the 2016 election. The president furious with the initial sentence recommendation calling it horrible and tweeting, cannot allow this miscarriage of justice. Within hours, Barr announced he had overruled his own prosecutors and acting U.S. Attorney for D.C., Timothy Shea, who also signed off on the seven to nine year recommendation even after discussing it with Barr. I guess I'm confused as to how that recommendation could get filed when you clearly were indicating that shouldn't go down like that. I think it really was a situation of uh, miscommunication. Barr tells ABC News that he made the decision before the president's tweet and that he never discussed the Stone case with the White House. The president has never asked me to do anything in a criminal case. And this morning, President Trump taking to Twitter to echo that part of the interview, but continuing to say that this doesn't mean that I do not have, as president, the legal right to do so. Democrats are accusing the president of abusing his power. The president is again trying to manipulate federal law enforcement to serve his political interest. Barr said he agreed that Stone should have been prosecuted and found guilty. President Trump hasn't ruled out a pardon. Inez De La Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live cam, some folks on the steps of the, cap of the Capitol, of the courthouse <laughs> this morning. 
getting married. So what a beautiful day for a wedding. Love is in the air. See? Da, 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 da. I don't know the rest of the words. I don't, I don't either. I don't know. Couples or something? <laughs> Oh, Are you married today? Like it's like hundreds yeah. at a time. There were big Good numbers. Hey, I, I will see that it was a little cold this morning for that, but the, the numbers were still big. It was, it, yeah. was, it was good to see. Uh, the sky is blue today. We got blue skies everywhere. Take a look at this picture from Kern City. Beautiful day. Sun is out. Indeed it is. Mary, thank you for sending in that picture. Uh, everybody dealing with this kind of weather. Now, you might think this is a little bit cold. At least some of us will call this cold. 48 degrees, Bernie Stage, 48 Holotus. 50 in Comfort, 47 Canyon Lake, 50 down there in Divine. And the forecast for today takes us up to 55 by 2 o'clock, 59, 4 o'clock. Then we'll start to fall off pretty quickly. So by midnight, we're in the mid-40s. If you have plans to be out tonight, it is certainly still coat weather. There will be a little bit of a wind chill probably to deal with too. But we have a warm-up in store. So we get into tomorrow. The numbers jump up to 65 for high. We'll get more cloud cover, more humidity. And then by Sunday, mid-70s, warmer, humid, Eventually, that humidity will lead to some shower activity, and then it gets much colder again next week. So another sort of roller coaster ride in that seven-day forecast. We're going to show it to you coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Well, parents may play a bigger role in their child's speech development than they actually may realize, according to a new study, that is. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more. Yeah. How parents talk to infants is strongly linked to how the child's speech mm -hmm. develops, according to an ongoing study recently published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The study showed that children whose parents were coached in parentese, a near universal speaking style distinguished by higher pitch, slower tempo, and exaggerated intonation, showed significant gains in conversational turn taking and vocalizations between 14 and 18 months. Coaching meant educating the parent on benefits of speaking to their babies and being encouraged to engage the child in back and forth conversational type exchanges. One of the authors says children of those coached parents produce real words such as ball or milk at almost twice the rate of children whose parents weren't coached to speak parentese. A previous study on the same group of babies showed parents who were coached to use parentese had babies who babbled more and had more words by 14 months than those who were not trained. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The Food and Drug Administration is now asking a company to take a weight loss pill off the market. The agency says it's been linked to cancer. The FDA wants people to stop taking the prescription drug Belvic. The generic name for the drug is Locuserin. The FDA started taking a close look at it last month. The clinical trials showed people who take it could end up getting cancer. So what should you do if you're taking the pill or if you use to take it? Health officials say the probability is low of any kind of special cancer screening, but you should talk to your doctor. It seems like everyone has a Netflix subscription these days, but if you're out of the loop, the streaming giant is letting you in. How Netflix is giving non-subscribers a peek at its platform. Going on vacation can be relaxing. That is until you lose your luggage. That's super annoying. After the break, tips to make sure you and your bags have a smooth trip. A federal judge agreeing to temporarily block Microsoft from beginning work on a major Pentagon contract. The multi-billion dollar cloud computing contract was aggressively pursued by Amazon. The order increases the pressure on the U.S. government as it defends itself for choosing Microsoft. Amazon has alleged that President Trump exercised undue influence over the Defense Department. The e-commerce giant has also accused President Trump of having personal animosity towards CEO Jeff Bezos. Earlier this week, Amazon asked the court for permission to get testimony from President Trump and Defense Secretary Mark Esper. A decision is expected on that request within weeks. Honda's recalling Odyssey minivans from 2018 to the current model year because a fire could break out. The recall affects 241,000 minivans. The danger is in a potentially faulty power outlet in the third row. Damaged wiring could cause a short circuit that might lead to a fire. Honda said it's aware of the three fires. 
that have been caused by this issue, but so far no one has gotten hurt. The recall is expected to begin in mid-March. Odyssey owners can check with their local Honda dealer. They will not be charged for repairs related to this recall. With winter soon wrapping up, spring break and then summer vacations aren't that far away. That means some folks are already planning trips. And as you plan, it's also a good idea to think about your luggage. ABC's Trevor Alt has easy tips and tricks for making sure you and your bags have smooth travels. It's not too early to start thinking about your travel plans for the year. And with that, a lot of travelers know what they want from the bags traveling with them. I'm looking for something that's hard, something that will wheel easily and spin easily, and something I can lift. You recognize this when it comes out. I Nobody is going to steal this bag. That's the first and probably most obvious tip from Consumer Reports. There are many bags out there. Make sure yours stands out. A ribbon, a sticker, or some colored duct tape goes a long way, both to help you spot it and also to keep other passengers away. That'll show you the bag is yours and it'll send a signal to other people not to pick it up mistakenly thinking that it's theirs. And of course you want to protect the things inside your bag. For that, a lock is recommended, but you can't just slap any kind of lock on the zipper. It needs to be TSA approved, which will be labeled on the packaging. So the agents checking your bag can conduct a search if they need. If the lock isn't TSA approved, they'll break it and you could damage the bag. Once you've handed your luggage over, you don't always have to wait to arrive at your destination hoping your bag made it too. Certain airlines like Delta and United have mobile apps which allow you to track your bag from check-in to arrival. So you can see at any given moment along your trip where the bag is. And maybe you want to avoid the baggage check process altogether. If you're willing to pay, there are options for that. New companies like Luggage Concierge and Luggage Club will ship your bags door to door. And if you have time and can drop your bags early, the company Lugless may be able to ship your bags for you at a cost even cheaper than the airline. We should also note that if you have a problem with your baggage, it's probably a better idea to reach out to the airlines through social media. Sending a Facebook message or tweeting at them, not only will they probably get back to you faster, you won't have to worry about waiting on hold. Trevor Ault, ABC News, LaGuardia Airport. So if you lose a bag, you tweet it? You lost my bag? Welcome to the future, my friend. Yes. <laughs> I always carry on. A lot of people do that these days. It's a big, I'm like pushing a carry on though. It's so it's yeah, you're squeezing it. <laughs> yeah, you can't I have one as big as the overhead <laughs> bin though, Sarah. Yeah. Come on now. Make it fit. <laughs> 49 degrees so far today. 34 the low this morning. So it's been a pretty chilly day. The averages are 67 and 44. We will be below average today. Records are 92 and 20. No rainfall. There is more in the forecast though and some colder temperatures, believe it or not. We'll talk about it coming up. We're talking about flying. It's a beautiful day to fly, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful nice weather, mm -hmm. yeah. clear Good skies. Travel. Awesome. Yeah, clear skies, and we're going to get a pretty good weekend, too. A, a warm-up's on the way. I know you're excited about that. Some warmer Thanks. temperatures by, certainly by Sunday, will be in the 70s. But it was cold this morning. Take a look at this picture. I think this is so cool. Uh, every now and then, you can get a little bit of frost on the windshield, and that's what we saw this morning. But look at the design. It almost looks like... Yeah. It looks like Frozen. Like, it like does. Elsa did it. <laughs> well, that, I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Oh. Uh, it kind of looks like a tree or leaves. And, and how this happens is you have this moisture in the air, and if the surface gets down to freezing, that moisture goes directly from a gas to ice. And if there's little imperfections in the glass, like pieces of dust or uh, maybe a little scratch or something, it forms these designs, and you can get these really cool designs with it. Uh, and yes, it, it, it does look like frozen now that you point that out. Uh, thank you very much for the picture. Let's take a look at the date night forecast tonight. Temperatures right around 8 o'clock. Maybe that's when dinner time is occurring. Maybe that's when you have reservations tonight. 51 degrees, clear skies. It will be a little chilly. And temperatures will pretty quickly fall into the 40s thereafter. So uh, it'll be cold tonight. Maybe not as cold as what we saw this morning, though. We did get down to 34. We're not looking for those kind of numbers. Outside right now, we've got blue skies. We're up to 50 now at Port SA, 49 at Randolph. And not a whole lot of wind out there, certainly less than we were looking at yesterday. But there is just enough in a few spots to get a wind chill. And that includes places like San Antonio where we've got a wind chill of 45, wind chill of 43 out in Del Rio. But that's going to pretty quickly go away too as these temperatures warm up. Forecast high temperatures should be in the upper 50s today. Maybe a few 60s on the map down to the south and west with clear skies for everybody in the forecast uh, area today. As we look at the big picture, there is uh, some cloud cover out in West Texas that's lining up. Even a few clouds out there around Del Rio. 
and that's going to keep things cloudy there. But we're seeing the sun uh, everywhere else. And that's sort of an indication that moisture is trying to come back in here. And with a more of a southeasterly flow tomorrow, that's when we start to see the moisture and that's when we start to see the clouds again. So places like Del Rio will probably start off with clouds again tomorrow morning. And they could spread their way towards San Antonio. So tomorrow is going to be kind of tricky with the cloud cover, but I think partly Sunday to mostly cloudy skies is what you can expect on your Saturday. Sunday, probably even more clouds as uh, the moisture starts to fill in and we get some high clouds on top of that. Uh, then we get into Monday. Monday is going to be a warm day. Temperatures close to 80. Still quite a bit of cloud cover, but it's Tuesday. That's our transition day because a cold front comes through. This looks like a pretty stout cold front. And I think at this point it may be early Tuesday morning when this front comes through and that'll bring with it a line of showers. And then behind it, we'll start to get that overrunning pattern where it's cold, cloudy, damp, nothing that's um, really heavy as far as rainfall goes. But it's just that light rain, sort of drizzly stuff, and that's going to keep temperatures on the chilly side. In fact, it could be cold enough for a little bit of snow just to our north up around San Angelo, Midland area. I don't think we'll get any winter weather here, but it's just that cold, damp rain that uh, we've become accustomed to during the winter. We're going to see some of that next week, I think. 59 degrees today, sunny, east chilly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tomorrow we'll uh, get into the... Uh, mid 60s, mostly cloudy, again, partly sunny and mostly cloudy. 75 Sunday, 78 Monday for President's Day, and then uh, that transition day Tuesday, 64. But uh, we may get that number early in the day, and then fall, 40 is expected Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, Monday's a holiday for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah, all the, I think all the kids are off from school. Oh, so oh, are they? Yeah, not a bad day. Oh, yeah. that's good. Sit them outside. Yeah. Don't Go stay play. in the house. Yeah. Go play. Go play. <laughs> Two holidays in one weekend. It could add up to big bucks at the box office. A preview of what's new in theaters coming up. Welcome back. In the spotlight, Netflix is letting anyone watch its original movie to all the boys I've loved before. Get this for free. And if you don't need an, and you don't need a Netflix subscription to watch, the offer stands until March 9th. Netflix is hoping enough people will see the movie and want to watch its sequel to all the boys. P.S. I still love you. It was released on the streaming service Wednesday. All you have to do is subscribe and you you do have to subscribe to Netflix to see that second sequel movie. Now, if you'd rather go to a showing at the box office, a quartet of new movies hoping to make a splash this weekend. The combination of Valentine's Day and President's Day weekend could mean more people are heading to the movies. CNN's David Daniel has the four-day weekend movie forecast for you. On my planet, people were always after my powers. So I came to yours. Sonic the Hedgehog finally speeds onto the big screen after criticism of the title character's original design prompted a do-over. The family adventure, based on the popular video game, should easily pass Birds of Prey for the top spot. Analysts expect it to make 40 to 50 million dollars over the four-day weekend. How the island does what it does is a mystery. They brought her back to life. Two other new films will duke it out with Birds of Prey for second place. Blumhouse's Fantasy Island puts a horror spin on the 70s TV show about the dangers of wish fulfillment. It's looking at a four-day debut worth 13 to 15 million or more. I'm Michael Block from the Republic. I'm doing a story about your mom. Maybe we should talk more. The photograph is also aiming for the silver medal. Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield star in the romantic drama, which box office watchers estimate could draw 12 to 15 million dollars or more in ticket sales over four days. Maybe we ski the beast after lunch. I don't think it'll be that challenging. It'll be fine. Finally, Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Will Ferrell star in Downhill, based on an acclaimed Swedish film. The dark comedy about a family on a ski vacation is looking at a four-day opening weekend worth $4 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Ooh, sounds interesting, doesn't it? Sounds That's a teaser trailer for the latest Batman movie. This time around, it's Robert Pattinson in the Batman suit. He's the newest Batman, a long line of famous actors who take on the role of the Dark Knight for the big screen. It starts in 1989 with Michael Keaton. That's how far back this goes. The most recent was Ben Affleck. Production on The Batman is underway in the UK. The movie hits theaters June 25th in 2021.
How was that even a tease? You couldn't even see the video. It's a dark night. It's very dark. Very dark. I, I thought you. Batman was in Gotham. He Since is. When did Gotham move to the UK? I thought Gotham was like New York or something. I can't. I, it is, but I can't keep Am I up. Am blowing your brain on that one? Uh, I know. I don't know. All right, so we'll keep it simple. We'll send it down to Mike and F Fiona. They always have it. Just fun. And Happy fun. Valentine's Day, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. 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 too. Yeah. Big yes. night. Oh, yes. We are covering both dinner and dessert. Yes, indeed mm -hmm. we do. If you're cooking for your loved one. Yes, and Chef to the Stars, Jose Benitez, with her food truck is here to help you get an idea to make that special dinner tonight. But if you're doing something like steak, you say there's you got to do something the second you take it out of the fridge. For me, the best way to do a steak is take it out an hour prior mm -hmm. and let it get up to room temp and it's easier to cook and it's going to taste way better. Ah, okay. Hey, you want to do dessert? Something really fancy but very, very easy. And Shaheen Taj Batch is here from You Name It, I Bake It and Fudge. Great chocolate. Yes, sir. So all you need is two simple ingredients, sweet condensed milk and chocolate. Uh, Put those two in the microwave for a minute, stir, pop in a mold or in a pan, prepared pan, put it in the fridge for 30 minutes, and you have fudge. And that's it. Yes, wow. sir. Simple and easy. All right, Valentine's is all about love. Yes, and Jen Tobias Trustee is out there at the rodeo today and found a true Texas love story. She's going to share that. Aw, that's great. Hey, Valentine's is all about your special Valentine, be it your, your spouse, mm -hmm. your sweetie, your kids mm -hmm. maybe, the whole family. We want to see your Valentine pictures. Yes, so be sure to send it at SA Live KSAT and you may see your photo on the show and let us know how you're spending your Valentine's Day as well. And we got a lot of good foodies. That more coming up on SA Live.